Hi, so I'm Miles. This is Alan, Rembrandt, and Justice. Um, and in collaboration with the NSA, we've developed an automatic weapon detection system. And the goal for this project is to utilize modern technology to reduce police response time um, and increase situational awareness. And we do this by applying software to the already installed camera systems um, that are in place uh, that uses deep learning, which is a form of AI, as well as uh, image processing and computer vision to automatically detect an armed individual. Further, we can introduce additional hardware, different types of imaging sensors to effectively detect a concealed weapon. Um, and you can actually see that process here where we're fusing visible light and IR to detect a concealed handgun. Um, and then if a weapon's detected, we send an alert to a mobile app used by police, uh, as well as the live video stream. Um, so according to the FBI, um, a violent crime happens every 25 seconds, which includes robberies and shootings. And in the event of a shooting, it can take about 18 minutes for police to respond, assuming the victims can um, make the phone call and alert the police. Um, also, according to the FBI, um, mass shootings are on the rise um, every year. So very high level methodology, we take the camera feeds, send them to our server where our software analyzes the footage, um, and then we send alert to an app. Uh, here's the app we built. We send um, an Im the image that triggered the detector uh, as well as the live video feed. And here's our software in more detail. We, we analyze the footage frame by frame. So we take the frames from the different sensors. Uh, we're using visible light and IR, but it's open to um, try other stuff like passive millimeter wave or um, X-ray microwave. Uh, but we, we take the sensor data, we pre-process and fuse uh, it together so that there's more features for our neural net to detect on. And, and then to reduce false positives, we only send an alert if a weapon's detected five frames in a row. And this is to ensure there's not like some random thing in the background triggering the detector. And then to increase efficiency, we employ a tracker that tracks the weapon just so we don't always have the object detector running. Another thing we can do is um, detect the person's face um, and know specifically who the suspect is and then send that information to the app as well. And this is really useful for places like schools, uh, places that already have databases of names associated with faces because of student IDs. Um, and assuming that large cities are, are the cities that can afford this, We'll be serving um, police department schools, airports, thousands of banks, convenience stores, um, jewelry stores, uh, you name it. Um, and so yeah, we, we believe modern technology is one of the most powerful forces to improve the quality of life, and that's what we seek to do. Yeah. So, any questions? How, how portable is this? I mean, could, could you conceivably use it with a pair of, like some kind of a night vision goggle? monocle or something to a police officer mobile could could actually see whether somebody was carrying a weapon or not? So currently we're using this uh, box right here. It's like about eight inches by four inches across. It houses the two cameras and a, and a Raspberry Pi that's in it and it does some of the processing. But the processing has to be sent to a, a server or a PC to crunch all the numbers and stuff like that. So could, I wouldn't... Could be chest mounted? Uh, the cameras could be chest mounted, but the processing would have to be done uh, either on a server or in the police car if it's right there. How, how fast? I mean, well, just uh, just to clarify, so basically, for uh, for if you want to detect a unconcealed weapon, you could use the body cams that they already use, and so we can use a uh, the architecture we're using right now is not for like small devices. However, we could implement it on a, a mobile net device that can work with uh, those low powered devices. However, we still need to check the accuracy and stuff like that because there'd probably be a lot of uh, false detection. Yes. So um, currently, all the testing we've been doing has been in uh, the, one of the research labs at UTSA, and so in that environment, it works very, very well. And so on, new, on newer environments, we would just have to uh, continuously add to our data set. So we have about 9,000 um, images from that data set. So whenever we move it to a new location, we would just add more uh, images, that way the model knows uh, what's actual, uh, that way it can be, uh, have better accuracy, something like that. One last question. Uh, how do you differentiate between the dummy weapon versus the real weapon? Yes. So basically, we, well, we, what we initially started with were uh, real handguns, and then also some BB guns, and uh, it worked very well on that, but then however, to transition to the, onto UTSA, um, just to, make the testing a little easier. Then the UTSA PD did allow us to uh, 
also borrow the uh, training handgun. And so then when we got that training handgun, we added it to the data set. And so now it can still differentiate between the two, but it will just label them as a handgun. So when we, if we were to deploy this at a score or something, we would just take out the images from the training handgun and just continue to use uh, uh, real handguns. But however, now that they're using 3D prints and stuff like that, um, maybe we want to just leave that in there and then um, let the users decide what they want to do, how they want their settings. And there's potentially other, other sensors we can try to, to help with this, but due to our budget, we're limited to IR. Um, but there's other sensors out there that will give other, show other features, uh, depending on the material. So.